Remember when smartphone first came out with Wi-Fi? Well, I had no idea what it was and whether it's worth the extra money to have that additional capability. And I feel like we're going through the same phase with EV chargers and OCPP at the moment. So if you've ever wondered what OCPP is, why it is important and what does it mean for you, me as an everyday driver, for businesses and for charge point operators, then strap in and I'll try and explain it all to you in the next eight minutes. Picture this, I have a phone. Now it doesn't matter what brand this is, this could be a Samsung, Apple or a Google. And I can connect this to most network providers like Optus, Vodafone or a Telstra. This brand agnostic interoperability is made possible because the phone uses a standard communication protocol to communicate with the providers. And this is what allows you to be able to make calls, send texts, use data, no matter which provider you're with. And this is very similar with EV chargers as well, no matter whether it's a Schneider or an Ocular, they can all connect to a back-end platform like Explorin, ChargeFox and Evity. And this is because they all use a standardised communication protocol called OCPP. OCPP stands for Open Charge Point Protocol. It is an open source standardised protocol designed to ensure interoperability between EV chargers and charge point management system. Effectively ensuring all the charger brands can work with the different back-end management systems. OCPP was originally developed by Elard, a Dutch organisation in 2009 to address the need for a unified standard in EV charging communication. Over time, this effort grew into a global initiative led by the Open Charge Alliance, which was established in 2014 to further develop and promote OCPP. The Open Charge Alliance is a global consortium of key players in the EV industry. So these includes charging hardware manufacturers, network operators, software providers, utility companies, automotive firms, and much, much more. You can actually see everyone that's involved on their website. Now, the great thing about this collaborative effort is that it ensures OCPP is vendor neutral, open and adaptable to the evolving need of the EV ecosystem worldwide. In fact, multiple times a year, Open Charge Alliance organizes OCPP plug fests around the world, where everyone in the EV industry comes together. We are testing with people here on site, but also online. And we are testing charging stations and charging station management systems for interoperability. So what can OCPP do and why is it important? Within the 1.6 version of this protocol, there are over 50 commands with a wide range of capabilities, including things like remote monitoring and management, firmware updates, dynamic pricing and billing, authentication and authorization, data collection and reporting. And in the latest 2.0 version, there are over 100 commands with the improvements on functionality, security and scalability. In fact, as of October 2024, the OCPP 2.0.1 has officially been approved by the International Electrotechnical Commission as the international standard, designated as the IEC 63584. This approval signifies a significant milestone of OCPP and underscore the critical role in advancement and harmonization of the EV charging technology globally. So why is it important and what does it mean for you and me as an everyday driver, for businesses who runs an EV fleet and for charge point operators who have a network of public chargers? For at home charging, a lot of people use a simple plug and charge charger at home. Me, for instance, I use a trickle charger at home because I don't drive a whole lot and I've got off-street parking where I can charge every day. Some people might have a smart charger at home which allows them to be able to stop, start, schedule or even integrate it to their solar system. But you don't need OCPP to do all that. Now, the only exception here are people who live in South Australia. In South Australia, there is a requirement for residential EV chargers to be OCPP compatible. From the 1st of July 2024, EV chargers that are in scope must not be installed unless they're registered with the technical regulator and they comply with OCPP 1.6 or higher. This requirement is put in place to enable the grid operators to control the chargers at times when the grid is constrained. Now, granted, if you're tech savvy, you can do a whole lot more with an OCPP charger at home, like integrating it with a smart home system or energy management system. For businesses, however, having an OCPP charger is a significant part of fleet management. You want to be able to monitor your charges all the time because uptime is crucial. This is Nick Franco. He was the former head of development at ChargeFox and currently the head of network growth at Explorin. I've reached out to Nick because I wanted to get a bit more understanding around the importance of OCPP charges for businesses. 
If you're a fleet operator, you'll want to be able to get all the data on the usage of your charger. You want to see how often is my charger being used? Yeah. How long are drivers staying for? How much energy are they using each time? And what is that costing me as the fleet operator? You know, these are basic sort of data sets that you need. So, uh, you know, having data on your charges is really key. The ability to monitor the charger usage is essential for businesses to support accurate reporting and forecasting. Equally important is the ability to be able to manage the authentication and authorization of drivers. What we also use it for is um, for tracking the fleet vehicles themselves. Um, so, for instance, you you know you've got uh, your vehicles, you're giving them an RFID. Yeah. Those vehicles will charge at work. But they'll also charge in public and they might charge at home and you can now track well where did my vehicle go mm -hmm. where has it been charging you've got that kind of full tracking of the vehicle yeah so i guess that's only made possible through ocpp with the increasing uptake of electric cars charge point management system also play a vital role in load management having an ocpp enabled charger means that the charging load can be dynamically managed not only to avoid exceeding power capacity, but also to ensure scalability as the business fleet grows. These are all the tools that are very important for a fleet to be able to manage their fleet effectively and efficiently. And lastly, I'll say OCPP is the most important for ChargePoint operators. ChargePoint operators like MCharge and BP Pulse generally run a few different brands of chargers. So it is important that all their charges can be managed from a single backend management system. It is also the OCPP communication between the backend platform that they're able to control the billing rules for all the charges. But most important of all, it allows them to be able to maintain the assets on the ground and keep an eye on any potential faults. You want to be able to monitor your charges at all time because uptime is crucial. You know, our call center is able to log into the charges when a driver is having, having an issue in public and the call center operator can now log into the charger and see what's going wrong. Yeah. And they can advise the driver or if it's a charger fault, they can log a ticket. Those sorts of things are really important for drivers and for operators. All in all, OCPP is a crucial protocol for the EV charging ecosystem, promoting interoperability, flexibility and efficiency. It plays an important role for businesses and charge point operators, helping to streamline operations, enhance user experience, and support the rapid growth for electric vehicle charging infrastructure.